Give us this day our daily bread Hungry are we, not to be fed Spirit of truth, water of life Refresh, 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 refresh Hi, welcome to Refresh. It's April, I'm Ian. And I'm Sue. And um, is that the Easter Bunny? Yeah, yeah, we're still in the season of Easter, so you're not putting me in any box in any cupboard just yet. I, I think it should be in the box with the Christmas decorations. Anyway, what's our theme this month, Sue? Our theme, I think, is Sunday, what Sunday? Sunday, what Sunday? Well, what Sunday is it? I guess we'll have to unpack that later. But, um, so it's still Easter, what should we sing? Well, to please Varian, and as we are still in the season of Easter, we're going to sing that good old Easter hymn, Thine Be the Glory. Yay, he's still risen. Do sing along. Words are on the screen. Let's have our first reading now. A reading from Acts 2, verses 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone in need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were saved. So the last time we did Refresh it was Palm Sunday, then it was Easter Sunday, in a month's time or so it'll be Ascension Day and Pentecost Sunday, 
What's this Sunday called? Well, I think in the church's year, it's just known as Easter 4. That's exciting. So it's like a no-name Sunday. Yeah, yes. And if you look at the church year, I mean, I'm no expert on the church year, but if you look at it, quite a few Sundays don't have special names. Um, they're, they're known as well, the first Sunday after Christmas, second Sunday after Christmas. Easter 1, Easter 2, and now we've got to Easter 4. So they're in between Sundays or like, they're running up to something Sundays or they're just after Sundays. Yes. So they're just like non-days really then? Well, it does raise the question, doesn't it, are they any less special because they don't have a name? Um, and I would argue that that they aren't any less special. What do you think? Well, I think, I mean, I, I just coming out of Easter reminds me that we get so focused on the run up to Easter and it's all about mm. Jesus is dying and Jesus is going to die and then Jesus has died and, and, and we do the whole death thing um, and then Jesus comes back to life mm. uh, and that feels like that's the important thing. Actually, every Sunday is really Jesus is risen, Jesus is alive day, mm. isn't it? So. So they're all special, the Sundays, the Mondays, every day of the week. We, we live in the, the special post-resurrection days, don't we? Yes, and in fact that's, you know, borne out in, in Scripture. The psalmist says, this is the day that the Lord has made, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. But actually I think a lot of people have found that quite hard in this last year. Well, I, I think... In some respects, I know that's the way that Christianity is supposed to live, but you know, my experience of Christianity and probably most people that I would think of as Christians, it's a bit like that. You know, you go through, you're in Narnia, you go, well, you go through the back of the wardrobe and you expect to be in Narnia, mm. but somehow you've ended up in a dentist waiting room or something, isn't it? It's like, yeah. Isn't, is it supposed to be like this? And yes. as you say, then we're in COVID lockdown. Yes, and it's been a bit like Groundhog Day, hasn't it? Each day is the same. Uh, you know, you wake up, you go for your exercise, you do your shopping, you come home. Um, so life has become quite ordinary for a lot of people. Um, and God isn't ordinary, is he? This We worship this extraordinary God. And I was, a, a couple of weeks ago, I was out running on a Sunday and I was thinking about the ref this this month's refresh and um, what we wanted to say, what I want, them, what I wanted to sort to sort of say, and I was thinking about Sunday as an acrostic poem. What would be an acrostic poem that I would write about Sunday? You know what you know what an acrostic poem is. I take it. God's riches at Christ's expense. Yes, exactly. You take um, the letters of a word and and try and make a poem about them. And I was thinking, what would be my acrostic for Sunday linked to the end of lockdown and things beginning to return to normal? And I came up with... S. Yep, show. U. Us. N. New. D. Dreams. A. About. Y. You. Not you. you. Dreams about me. <laughs> I, even the old dreams about me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not coming up. <laughs> new dreams about God. That's an acrostic prayer. Right. Show us new dreams about you. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I feel God is saying to me at the moment. You know, that He is the God of new things and and He's always in the business of doing new things. Um, and He is asking me do I want to, to take part in these new things? Am I adventurous enough to take part in these new things? Oh, well, so living dangerously, not safely. Yeah, and I suppose this whole last year has been about living safely. Isn't it? The government's message, uh, the COVID message is about keeping us safe um, so that we can defeat this this pandemic and return to, to normal life. 
So, you know, that the message has very much been one of safety. Um, and there's a tension there, isn't there, between living safely and living adventurously. One of my favourite places is um, Postman's Park in London. And this is where that sort of tension or challenge always sort of really resonates with me. Postman's Park, it's about 300 yards from St Paul's. It's probably mm -hmm. 300 times quieter than St Paul's. I, I used to go there sometimes just to get away from the hubbub of London. And, and Postman's Park is it's called Postman's Park because it's next to the post mm. office building where the mm. postman used to go and have their, their, their sandwiches at lunchtime. My grandma used to work in that Postman's building. Indeed. And, um, and it's, it's a lovely little park. But... Um, there's a there's a wall with plaques on it, uh, mm. and um, I think in the year sort of 1900, somewhere around there, the artist George Frederick Watts um, decided that um, well he was reading in the newspapers I guess about people who w were dying um, because they were heroically sacrificing their life to save someone else's. Whenever he came across a story like that, he was thinking, shouldn't we have a memorial to those people, mm. the ones who just selflessly sacrificed their life to save someone else's life? Uh, and he created his own. So every time he read one of those stories, he made a little plaque, mm. a ceramic plaque, and he put it on the wall. And there's 50 or 60 of them. Um, and whenever you go to Postman Park, you find people just reading those plaques. And then sort of, it's, it's a, suddenly, you know, it's a, it's a place of quiet and stillness and, and awe mm. and you just see people getting quieter and quieter and mm. I remember one, you know, the, the young Reverend Garnish, I think his name was, who um, just died um, saving a boy from drowning mm. in the Thames at Putney. Mm. Uh, and and I, I'm in awe when I read those stories and I'm always moved in Postman's Park and I always have to ask the question, would I sacrifice my life to mm. save someone else's? And I don't know that I would or could. I hope, I hope mm. I would, but would I really? Mm. Do I have that sort of courage? Yeah, yes. I don't know. It's interesting, isn't it? Because it's drilled into us as children. You know, safety is is the message we have. The you know, when you and I were um, were little, it was not the green cross, cross code, it was the curb drill, you know, look right, look left, and if it's safe, cross the road. Yeah. Um, and my parents are obsessed with safety. They're very risk averse. And I remember as a child, um, I was a brownie, and I can't remember which badge it was we were, we were um, doing, but part of this badge was you had to do a venture. A venture. A venture, V-E-N-T-U-R-E. -E. Mm. And I read the, as a seven-year-old, I, I misread this or misheard it and thought that it was an adventure. And I remember asking my older brother if he would take me on an adventure. Now, you know my brother well. That's not going to happen. No, it? it's really not, not going to happen. He's not very adventurous at all. Um, and I think that part of me, all my life, has been this person who's, who's wanted to have an adventure, but the fear, the, the need to stay safe has sometimes stopped me from, from, from having that adventure. And I remember a, a few years ago, I was doing a course at Worth Abbey, and we were talking about whether you can ever know God's purpose for your life. And there was a lady in my group and she was a Quaker. And she said she didn't think that, that she could know God's purpose for her life. But the challenge for her was to live adventurously, to ask those questions, you know, what do you want me to do today, God? Where do you want to take me? And this really stirred something in me. I think it connected with that seven-year-old girl who wanted to have an adventure. And there's part of me that, as we come out of lockdown, wants to be brave enough to say to God, OK, we've been in lockdown for a year. What adventure do you want to take me on? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do?
I like that and, and part of me wants to be braver and to be in situations where I can be the person that I'm needed to be. Um, but then part of me thinks, yeah, but would you really, Ian? Would you? Um, I remember, I don't know if you remember the story of, um, uh, I think his name was Johnny Benjamin, um, the Good Samaritan on Waterloo Bridge. This is, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago now, mm. um, where um, it's like commuting time, all the commuters are wandering over Waterloo Bridge. I used to do that every day, mm. so I was probably mm. one of them. Uh, but one of the commuters just noticed that this guy, young guy, Johnny Benjamin, um, was sitting down at the edge of the bridge and this guy thought he's going to throw himself in the river <laughs> that doesn't look good and he stopped and he just talked to him and he's like you all right mate what's up mm. uh, and this guy johnny benjamin he just come out of hospital he'd been diagnosed with schizophrenia and he was thinking my life is over i can't face that uh, and he was going to kill himself because mm. uh, this guy just noticed and took the time to stop and then said look you know, I'm here, you know, you're the most important thing in my day, let's go for a coffee, should we have a chat? Um, you know, I know it looks bad, but actually it can get better. Um, that was enough to stop Johnny Benjamin throwing himself in the river mm. that day. Um, and actually, I think they were reunited later on, they've become good friends, and, mm. and Johnny Benjamin is now a sort of mental health advocate. Uh, and and I, I love that story, and yeah. I think, you know, there are good Samaritans everywhere, uh, and we're called to be those sorts of people. Mm. And part of me is challenged because guess what, I may have been just one of those people who just walked straight past, didn't even notice. Mm -hmm. And if I had noticed, would I have actually sacrificed whatever the meeting was that I thought was important that day to just go and save someone's life? Or would I have done that thing that looks like, well, I've got a meeting, so I can't do it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. And I, and I think there's a real challenge for Saul, isn't there, to be the people that God would have us be and mm -hmm. to pray the prayers and take the big sort of risks but fear or conditioning mm. or habit sometimes holds us back. So do you think there was a fear involved in, you know, as you're, as you're recounting that story, would you have been afraid of, of saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing or... I, I don't know. Fear I, of wanting to, of being involved? I, I, yeah, I wonder whether I just don't care enough, mm. if I'm honest, but partly it's, it's a fear of, I don't know what I'm getting into, so maybe you just won't mm. get into it. And I think that's very common. Um, and yet it's not mm. its not what we're called to be or how we're called yeah. to act. Um, and the Book of Acts, guess what? You know, Palm Sunday, the run-up through Easter week, you've got those disciples, they're all fearful, aren't they? Mm. I don't even know the man, said Peter, as they mm. accused him of being one of Jesus' friends. And yet, what happened? Mm. What happened after Acts? Well, after Easter, yeah, I mean, yeah. on Easter Sunday, there we hear that, you know, we read that they're locked together in, in the upper room for fear of the Jews. You know, it, it's very similar to, to where we are at the moment, isn't it? You know, the, um, I think that people are very fearful of coming out of lockdown, you know, fearful of, of meeting people again being in crowded places still afraid that they're going to get covid so there's a lot of similarity to today, today's situation with with what we're what, with what we read in acts you know in acts chapter two the the disciples they met together in secret um they but they were they were living differently, you know. In our reading, in from Acts chapter two, they shared everything they had. They sold their possessions and shared the proceeds with those in need. They met in each other's homes. They shared their meals with great joy and generosity, even though they were living in this in fear. And they praised God, and. It says each day the Lord added to their group those who were being saved because they were living a life that that showed their faith, lived out their faith. And, you know, as we read the book of Acts, it's incredible how this small ragtag group of 
ordinary people turned the world upside down because they were willing to say to God, what do you want to do with, with me? How do you want me to live my life? Um, what adventure do you want me to have? Mm. What do you think? Well, I, I, th I think, you know, if they hadn't really seen Jesus come back from the dead, that transformation wouldn't have happened. Mm. So that's the most important part of the Bible for me. Not, mm. not so much that Jesus came back from the dead, but, but the fact that and the people who previously were timid and frightened suddenly were fearless and bold. Uh, mm. And that's the evidence that works. And lived generous lives. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and I'm always reminded of a prayer that um, Jonathan Mortimer once made a sort of motto at a church. We Who's were Jonathan at. Mortimer? He's a vicar that he was a vicar at St Mary's Church hey. a number of years ago. Um, and, and his motto for the year was, uh, we are the people who ask God, what would you have us do? Mm. And then we ask God that he will equip us, and give us the strength mm. to do what he would have us do. Uh, and that's that's my prayer. Mm. Mm. Good prayer to have. Are we bold enough to pray it? What would you have us do, our God? Mm. To give us the strength and the vision and equip us to do that. Mm. Amen. Amen. I like that acrostic idea, Sue. Sunday, show us new dreams about you. That sounds like the sort of challenge our refreshed viewers would like to have a go at. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. Why don't you have a go at writing your own acrostic based on Sunday? And either email it to us or put it in the comments on Facebook. Um, we'll stick it on Facebook and we'll share them with our fantastic refresh and Facebook audience. So Sunday, acrostic, off you go. And let's have our second reading. A reading from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 6, verse 16. The Lord said to his people, You are standing at the crossroads, so consider your path. Ask where the old reliable paths are. Ask where the path is that leads to blessings and follow it. If you do, you will find rest for your souls. So, that's an interesting reading, isn't it? Stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the old way, which is the good way. So, should we just go back to the old ways then? No, I don't think that's what that reading is saying. Uh, we are at a crossroads as we come out of lockdown and as things begin to open up. There is a sense that some people want to go back to how things used to be but I don't think we can go back to how things used to be we're all changed by what's happened in the last year I think what the old way is is God's way and God's way if we follow God's way it will always take us somewhere new and exciting so we're going to sing a song now this is called Stand at the Crossroads, and it's not called Stand at the Crossroads and then reverse and go back to where you came from. It's called Stand at the Crossroads and Look.
St Margaret's we're supporting our local food bank run by the Easter team and we're also supporting uh, Christians Against Poverty. Um, if you'd like to get involved, details of how you can do this will appear on the screen. And basically what we're looking for is people to just sign up to give regular food donations which Sue Gilbert will collect and deliver or if you can deliver them to Sue that's even better. And Christians Against Poverty they just really value your prayers and if you can regularly support them with some financial giving that will make a big difference. Okay, we're heading into another song now, a song about the Holy Spirit. It's nearly Pentecost. Whatever dreams we might have for our lives, whatever dreams God might have for us, we won't be able to do what God would have us do without the Holy Spirit present in our lives. We do believe the Holy Spirit is with us all the time, but we can always feel more in touch with the Holy Spirit. So this song says, Come Like You Did. We learn to breathe when you put breath into us Spirit of God, we learn to speak when you give language to us Spirit of God, come as the prophet saw, come with a holy roar, come with a fresh outpouring Pentecost once more Come like you did Wildfire on the wind Sweep through your church Fill us through the brim Leap from our tongues Fan the gospel flame to live, work and praise Spirit of God Come as the prophets saw Come with a holy roar Come with a fresh outpouring Pentecost once more Come like you did Wildfire on the wind Sweep through your church Fill us through the brim Leap from our tongues Fan the gospel flame So that's it from Refresh for another month. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget, have a go at the acrostic challenge. You've got to make a sentence using the letters from Sunday. S-U-N-D-A-Y. And Sue, remind us what you came up with. Show us new dreams about you. So maybe you can do better than that. Let's, let's know how you get on. Sue, would you like to finish with a prayer? Yes. This prayer is from a book called Island of Light. And... 
Uh, all the prayers are, come from the Northumbrian community. I love Northumbria, um, big skies, big beaches. It's somewhere where I feel very close to God. And this prayer is called Wide Horizons. Good and gracious God, grant to our eyes wide horizons. Increase our vision to see beyond the obvious and into the depths. Let us walk ways that are new, where we do not know the destination. Let us journey in joy and in hope. Among so many troubles and dangers, surround us with the protection and peace of your love. May we know that heaven and earth are one and that nothing separates us from you. Amen. Amen. Bye. Bye. The Easter Bunny says bye. He won't be here next month. No, not He'll till be next back Easter. in the box. Bye. Give us this day our daily bread Hungry are we, Lord, to be fed Spirit of truth, water of life Refresh, 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 refresh